In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can use a marker to precisely place an object anywhere in your timeline, or to simply mark a spot that you'd like to move to in your timeline with great precision. Before we use markers, we have to look at two different elements that you have in mind when you're working in a project. You have two modes. You have one that's called movie mode and one that's called clip mode. Now, when you start in a project like this one, you start out in movie mode. The reason I can tell I'm in movie mode is although my timeline marker is above the clip on the right side of the screen, that clip is not highlighted in white. When I click on the clip, it outlines it in white, and now I'm in clip mode. The easiest way to get between the two modes is to use your keyboard. If I press page down, I'm in movie mode. Now notice the time code on the right corner of the screen below the preview. Right now it says 2 minutes, 9 seconds, 7 frames. I do page up to get into clip mode and it changed. Because in the clip I am 5 seconds and 11 frames. So page up is clip mode, page down is movie mode. We're going to set both clip markers and timeline markers, which would kind of be equivalent to a movie marker. So let's start out with a timeline marker. The first time I ever set one, I just moved my playhead where I wanted to and clicked on it with the right mouse button and clicked on Add Timeline Marker. And indeed, that works. There's a better way to do that. I'll do Control-Z to undo it. The easiest way to do that is simply press the M key on the keyboard. And that will give you a marker wherever the playhead happens to be. If I want to delete a marker, if it's highlighted and I'm on top of it, I simply do Shift M and it will delete it. So M will create the marker, Shift M will delete that marker. We'll give you more about that later. The other thing that I want to know is how do I precisely position the marker? Instead of dragging the playhead anywhere I want on the screen, I'm going to use a more precise technique. The Alt G key will take you to your time code. So I'm going to press the Alt key down and press the G key for go. And it takes me to my time code and you notice that the frames are lit up. I can use my numeric keypad and type in a different number. I'll type in zero for frames. Now I want to go back to the seconds so I, you can use left and right arrow to move between hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Say I want to be two minutes and seven seconds into the into the project. I type in the number seven, press enter, and it will move my playhead accordingly. Now I'm precisely where I want to be in my project, and so I'll press the M key and I'll set a time code. I'll use Alt G to go again, and then I'll use left arrow. Maybe I want one two minutes and 12 seconds. So I'll type in 12, press enter, press M, and I just set another one. If I want to go earlier in the project, let's try one more. Alt G to go. Let's say I want to go back to one minute, one minute and 18 seconds. Press enter. And now I'm over in a different clip. Press M. I set a marker. So this gives you the precision of setting a marker time wise exactly where you want it anywhere in your timeline for your entire project. So the Alt G is really good because you're working with time code and you can be extremely precise. Now, if I want to move between the individual markers that I've set up, I just simply hold the shift key down, press the left or right arrow, and it will move between the markers. And so that's how I move between timeline markers. Let me show you another thing that you can do when you're setting a marker. I'm going to do Alt G to go, and let me go into the project one minute and 15 seconds, press enter and I happen to be right on the edge of that one. I'm going to do M for marker, and I'm going to press the M a second time. If you press it twice, you get this area where you can edit the marker. You can say Memo, give it a title, and I can say Add New Music here. Another thing you can do is, is you can add a color to the marker. And I know some editors who like to color code them. They will say, one color will relate to music, another one will relate to titles, another one will relate to special effects. 
and so you don't have to do anything but look at the color of the marker and you can tell what it's there for. So that's another thing you could possibly do if you like. So we'll just set that to a different color to show you can do it. Now when I'm using my markers, I might want to take this one and say, oh, I'm going to place music. So I'll take music and drag it down and drop it and it will snap to that particular marker. I might likewise want to do the same with some other markers on the timeline with titles. I'll take this title and drag it over and it'll snap to that line. I'll take another title and it will snap to this line, either left side or right side. You can move the marker with the mouse or you can just delete it and use the time code to move it even more precisely. So those are some of the things that we can do. I have a special effect down here on this track and I can snap it to this particular marker if I like. So there's no limit to what you can do when you're using these markers in timeline mode. Let's go to movie mode and show you how that's slightly different. So I'm going to press the page up key to get into movie mode. And now I'm in movie mode. You notice my time code here is 4 seconds and 20 frames. I'll press M again. That will set a movie marker. Let me move, slide this up so we can see better. And I can set it. I can also use Shift M to remove it again or M to put it back just like I did with Timeline. And I am 4 seconds and 20 frames in here. Let's go 5 seconds and 20 frames. I'll hit 5, Enter, M. And I just set another marker inside this particular clip. Here's an interesting point. When you're moving between the markers with the shift right arrow or left arrow, you notice it will hit every marker. It doesn't care whether it's a timeline marker or a clip marker. So any marker will be a place where it will stop when you hold the shift key down and press left or right arrows in your project. What if you want to remove all the timeline markers? Well, I'm going to press page down to get into timeline mode. Now I'm in timeline mode. If I do control shift M, that will remove all my timeline markers. I'll do control Z to undo that. Now, how do I remove a clip marker? Well, I go to clip mode by pressing page up. And let me, before I do that, let me set another clip marker here on this other clip and another one on this clip. Okay, so now I have three clips, each with clip markers. If I click on this clip and I do Control shift m now I'm in clip mode, it will only remove all of the markers inside that particular clip. To do a different clip, I have to highlight it and do Control shift m and that will re remove all the markers. So when you're in clip mode, it will only remove the clip markers for an individual clip, but if you're in timeline mode, Press page down again, control shift M, that will take out all of the timeline markers. I'll do control Z to get back there. So whether it's moving from one spot to another inside your project with a marker or precisely setting something like a title or a piece of music or anything else you can put on the timeline, markers are a great tool to use in CyberLink PowerDirector.